All right, welcome to our live coverage of Wizards Media Day on 106.7 The Fan of the Team 980 on YouTube. And as you see right there, head coach Wes Unsell Jr. with us. Wes, how we doing, man? Great, thanks. Thank it's been a me. whole week since I saw you. We don't have <laughs> uh, flies by. media media members playing <laughs> mediocre basketball in front of us. Oh, thank God. I did, uh, I did razz Will a little bit. Uh, Dawkins just sat down for an interview that people will be able to hear a, a little bit later. Um, but we... Uh, I did razz him a little bit for his uh, sprint off the bench, cherry pick, stand on the block. He, he, he quickly brought up that he brought his team back later after I left. So That is true. They were down big, and I think it was a 20-plus point deficit. Woo. So they walked him down, made it a one-point, uh, excuse me, one-possession game. So kudos to them. Kudos, kudos to them, whatever, whatever that's worth. Uh, speaking of Will, I want to start uh, the actual questions with you, talking about the relationship between Will, Michael, you. Um, Will had actually a really interesting quote, and he talked about the relationship between like the top and the coaching staff. He's like, let's be clear, Wes is a part of that. Wes is part of the top. Um, and I, I, I mentioned that just as context, not uh, in, in contrast to what it's been, but I do want to ask you the contrast of like what the working relationship was like with Tommy these last couple of years and how things have changed uh, f- bet- with Will and Michael in the fold here? Well, Tommy and I had a great working relationship. I mean, it was uh, a relationship of constant communication. Uh, we, we would touch base several times a day. Um, I think the, the biggest difference is, um, you know, the, the collaboration of other departments, you know, on top of my communication with Will and Mike. Uh, more so with a leadership team in a group, um, that you know they, they, they want to operate that way and make sure there's a steady flow of, of information going back and forth. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, obviously, it's going to change as well once you guys get into the season, um, analytics, you know, st- all that kind of stuff that gets passed from a front office to a coaching staff. How have you been able to, with some of your new hires, integrate people who – can get you the information you want, maybe translate some of the information they want you to have that's different than stuff you've used in the past. And how's that, like how much pre-planning have you guys done for that adaptation process? Quite a bit. You know, some of it is, you know, getting people up to speed with what we've done, looking back and, and, you know, dialing into those things. Are those things efficient? Are those things the right things? Are those the right metrics? Um, Is this the the best process? Um, You know, and that's the, you know, one of many takeaways from Will and Mike, they're very process driven. Um, you know, very reflective, you know, as far as what we're doing and making sure that putting our players first, the staff, but being mindful of, of every single detail. So one of the things that I think is going to be interesting this season and perhaps it's most interesting from your seat is this is very process oriented. I think fans, media, I'm certainly trying to take a long view on what's being built here. You're the coach who lives it day to day, like the wins and losses matter to you and the players more than anybody sure. else. So how do you balance that very clear directive that like we're about the small wins, we're about this process with trying to win every basketball game that you guys list it up for? Yeah, you know, we want to make sure we're competitive, you know, and that might not translate to wins. Um, but you want teams to walk away from playing the Wizards and know that, you know what, we, we had to play to beat this team. Uh, we have to compete at the highest level. Um, you want our guys to enjoy competing, you know, enjoy the, to connect, the connectivity that it takes to be a really good team. Of course, you know, we'll have to find small measures. You know, I think we've, we've measured some things internally, but to, to see the day-to-day improvement, the week-to-week improvement, you know, the month-to-month improvement individually and collectively, I think we keep stacking those. We're, we'll be heading in the right direction. It's year one for them, but it's year three for you. Mm-hmm. Like, is this going to be a test of your own patience? I think I'm a pretty patient guy. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think uh, there, there, there's a vibe of excitement. I think, um, you know, having these guys here since early September, um, you know, they're, they're connecting and developing some on-court synergy. It's, um, you know, it's a really good competitive vibe. And I think there's a lot of joy in the room. Um, you know, guys are, you know, starting to show a little bit of themselves and a little bit more of their personality. So it's, it's, it's new and different at the same time, but it's nice to also have some pieces back, uh, you know, on the returning team. How is the vibe different when it's a bunch of younger guys? Like a guy like Brad had been here for 10 years. Mm-hmm. And obviously when you're, when you're that and you're the face of the franchise and you're second all-time leading scorer, you're Bradley Beal in the Washington Wizards. Like that sets a certain tone from the top mm-hmm. with that, gone how is the vibe different well to your point it it is a young group but i also think it's a uh, mature group we have some young players who've been uh, integral parts of you know a a championship team you know of really good teams playoff teams Uh, so there's a balance of you know the youthful 
uh, movement. Uh, but then you have some some steady presence in on the veteran side. Um, guys like Gallo, Taj, you know, you, Mike Muscala, been around for a bit. You know, I look at Tyus Jones as a young vet. You know, we'll continue to see uh, Kuz take a step forward in that role. And then Jordan, of course, you know, who he's won a championship and already at the age of 24 has that experience that we all covet. Wes Untel Jr. with us here on the Hoffman Show at Wizards Media Day. So I think the most interesting comments, and I think I've asked you about this before, but like now with the summer to reflect on it, the most interesting thing to come out of the end of last year for me was Corey's comments Mm -hmm. about not really having an identity. Mm -hmm. It changed night to night based off who was healthy, which was never the same guys. Um, For you as a coach, like to spend a summer cultivating what this identity is going to be, like, what have you kind of landed on? What's the message to your team as you get started of, of this is who we are? Well, I think the first thing is, you know, the competitive piece is one thing. That's going to be a given. But um, modernizing how we play, you know, I think playing with a little bit more tempo, um, you know, finding ways to generate more threes. And I think that's, you know, regardless of who's out there, we can control those areas. Our competitiveness, our shot profile, you know, you know our connectivity. Um, they don't always have empirical backing, but uh, I do think that that tends to, lead us in the right direction and contribute to winning. One of my favorite phrases of yours is shot diet. Um, I love, I love a Wes Unseld shot diet quote. Uh, I prob- need to be on a diet. <laughs> That's, diet. We don't, we don't tolerate that kind of talk on this show. We're very, we're very uh, positive uh, on that regard, but a shot diet we can talk about. Um, how do you ensure that the shot, like one, you, you kind of touched on it there, more threes, but like, yeah. how do you shape the shot diet to be the right shots at the right times with by the right players. Yeah, I think the the one piece that often gets overlooked is is win. I think a lot of guys understand the why. You know, the the, the value and the overall efficiency for certain areas on the floor is higher than others. Um, we don't want to live in a you know world of black and white. There's a lot of gray in the game. Um, certain guys are it's a good shot for this guy, might not be a great shot for that guy. But you know, it's it's an area that we want to try to reinforce. Obviously, you want to get to the rim, open up corner threes, above the break threes, you know, paint twos and the non-paint twos being the, the, the less effective. But understanding late in the clock, uh, we want the best possible possession we can generate. So if that's a tough contested mid-range two, then so be it. We don't want to just um, say that, they're, you know, that, that is totally out of the game. Um, certainly a strength for some guys. But want to minimize and hunt those high-value shots early, minimize the, you know, suboptimal in the meat of the possession, and in the possession, find the best opportunity we can. What are your early impressions of Jordan? There's a youthful maturity, um, and I think he's he's done it organically. Where um, he, he's not coming in from a space where he knows it all or he's experienced it all. He's asking a lot of questions and trying to uh, connect and, and get to know his teammates. Um, then also he's showing us what he likes. Um, certain areas on the floor, certain actions he's very efficient in. Um, so it's been great to just kind of sit back and let it play out um, and just kind of watch from afar. Um, and, you know, he, he's a dynamic, you know, guard. I think he can take a, a lot of steps forward in, in, in a number of areas, but he's already shown us that, you know, he's capable. As a man with a very nice beard, what do you think of Jordan's beard? <laughs> it's, uh, it, it, it'll, it'll come. <laughs> it, it'll come. <laughs> More on the youthful than the maturity side of the youthful well, maturity. <laughs> I tell you, I'll, I'll take the hair over the beard, so uh, we, can trade. we can trade. There's that. Um, I am so curious for you as a guy who came in, touted, highly uh, skilled defensive coach and certainly that that is something that you have in your bag you look at a player like Jordan Mm -hmm. who for everything I've heard his work ethic is outrageous but he's also had a very uh, you know difficult defensive Mm -hmm. uh, some very difficult defensive moments in high leverage situations for Golden State like the tape is the tape it is what it is how do you leverage that work ethic and that desire and that that maturity into efficacy on the defensive end for him well it starts with the will and the want you know he's shown that he wants to be good he, you know, he's got the physical tools to do it. And, of course, you're going to have to you, you'll have to live through some youthful mistakes. Um, obviously, you know, those, those high-pressure moments, it matters. Those become magnified. But I think going through those experiences, he'll be better for it. Um, and I think just him dialing into, you know, being a coverage expert, understanding exactly what needs to be done in each and every possession, that takes time, that takes reps. Um. I think one of the other interesting things for you this year is going to be managing the rotation. There's there's a lot of players that feel like they're at very similar levels. Mm-hmm. So how how much of a feel do you have right now for what your rotation looks like, or do you think that is something that you know is is definitely going to evolve, or do you feel like going into the season like, hey, as long as we're not there'll be injury management, sure. all those kinds of things, but like I actually kind of know what it's going to look like. 
Uh, you, you have it on, you know, on paper, <laughs> always yeah. a pencil. Yeah. Um, you know, but you do want a healthy um, degree of competitive uh, preseason to see where it shakes out. Um, along with the right fit, I think it's important. You know, it's good to have your best players out there and, you know, you're going to rely on those best players as, as much as you can. But uh, you, we also have to find minutes for young guys, you know, and I think doing that early in the season will, you know, allow them to get through some of the minutia of, youth and understanding and we'll be better for it later in the year so two guys i want to ask you about and exactly in that vein uh Bilal, where does he fit it and you said the other day at your your season opening presser like he's probably going to get some g league time which i think made mm-hmm. a couple people go whoa okay yeah considering how good he was in summer league but where does he fit in in the the big team rotation um he's gonna play you know and i can't tell you how much i can't tell you when but you know i think what what uh, in terms of positionally like does he have the flexibility to go two through four two through five I think like he does i really do and um you know we'll, we'll be patient with him i mean i think he's going to he's going to show us some things as we go but the biggest thing is the, for him to dial into habits you know um, with his consistency it's got to be a day-to-day thing um you know just making that work ethic you know he's got the work ethic but you know kind of channeling what that looks like for him every day um and he's got to just find ways to stack those days together consecutively and I, you know i think he'll be a different player by the end of the year other guys johnny where does he you guys have a ton of different guards yeah. he's got a pretty unique skill set i feel like the defensive stopper kind of mold mm-hmm. uh, in that how does that fit him i think likewise you know he's gonna have to find ways to carve out minutes you know it, it, it'll be earned um, you know, I think the experience he had toward the end of last year is, was telling. Certainly capable. Um, a lot of it just, you know, based on opportunity. But, you know, once again, there's got to be a level of consistency with it. Uh, last question I'm going to ask everybody. WNBA Finals, who you got? Oof, just hit him right with it, right out of left field. Uh, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Do I have to say it? I mean, I can't make you, but I, it, it's certainly better for the interview if you do. That's pressure. <laughs> Hardest question you'll be asked all day. You know what? It's ooh. I feel like you've almost answered it four times. I know. I don't want to say it though. Mm, 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 mm. All right, I'll go with New York. Okay. All yeah, right, I'm going to New York. Anthony, that's one for you over there. He's he's on the Liberty. I got the Aces. I know it's it's, it's a tough one. But it's. The two very good teams. Yeah. Let's yeah. see this prognostication thing. It's not so easy. <laughs> Wes Unsell Jr. with us here on the Hoffman Show. Uh, of course, also the Team 980, your home for Wizards basketball.